I'm here at the SOHO Italy meeting and want to start by saying that this organization has grown so rapidly and is now presenting cutting edge science and clinical medicine in multiple myeloma. Importantly, not only Italian researchers and providers, but participants from around the world are at this meeting. And there's a tremendous emphasis on the new generation of researchers and caregivers. So this is an amazing growth in only three, four years, and the future could not be more bright for this organization and as a consequence for patients and caregivers for myeloma in Italy. My talk was called, What are the Next Steps Towards Cure in 2030? What I focused on is the translation of biology to the clinic. I mentioned how important it is for myeloma cells to interact with the bone marrow microenvironment and how that interaction confers epigenetic changes and genomic changes and cell signaling changes both in the tumor and the microenvironment that on the one hand promote myeloma cell growth, survival, and drug resistance, and on the other confer immunosuppression. And so we have uh, analyzed how we can devise a, a score that reflects the consequences of the interaction between the tumor and the microenvironment that can be used to profile both the tumor and the host at diagnosis and along their disease course and allow for more accurate prognostication but also treatment. And I talked about how we're learning lessons from the drugs we already have in myeloma. So we have bortezomib, the proteasome inhibitors, and I talked about they inducing immunogenic cell death. And very recent exciting data from Anna Maria Gula, who's now here in Torino, uh, showing that the absence of immunogenic cell death is a characteristic of P53 deleted high risk cancer. Conversely, if we can restore immunogenic cell death in high risk cancer, we can actually improve outcome. I talked about melphalan causing mutations and mutational burden potentially being a uh, sensitizer to immune therapies. I mentioned in the immunomodulatory drugs that more potent binders to cerebron, so-called molecular glues, are now being utilized. And I also mentioned these bifunctional degraders, medicines that can actually be used that bind to cerebron and can degrade selective proteins. I talked about some new targets in the tumor, the microenvironment, and in the interaction. I then moved on to talk about targeted therapies in myeloma, venetoclax and abortezomib or other proteasome inhibitor is very effective in the 1114 BCL2 overexpressing myeloma. But I mentioned how we and others can use targeted therapies to overcome resistance to myeloma treatments. MEK or ERK inhibitors can overcome IMID resistance. JAK inhibitors can overcome resistance to CD38 antibodies. And then I finally, in the last part of my talk, mentioned the immune treatments. CAR T cells are very exciting in our disease. I mentioned some new concepts whereby you could in, really create the CAR T cells overnight, give small numbers of CAR T cells, and let them expand in the patient. That would be very clinically relevant but also might allow for more widespread access to CAR T-cell treatment. And I mentioned the bispecific T-cell engagers. They're very exciting because one of them was FDA approved yesterday in the United States. But I think they're exciting because they're off the shelf and they allow for localization of the patient's immune system with their tumor cell, more potent immune reactivity on the one hand, and probably a more favorable therapeutic index since a more localized immune response. And the two targets are BCMA, but I mentioned a new one called GPRC5D. So in summary, I really talked about how biology, bench-to-bedside research, 
tumor microenvironment interactions have allowed great progress so far, but I think the future is brighter still.